Hi guys, welcome to video number two of unit five, sectional divide and reconstruction from 1844 to 1877. In this video, we're gonna be taking a quick look at the Mexican-American War. We're gonna look a little bit at the causes and effects of the Mexican-American War. So let's start with the causes of the Mexican-American War. And um, it probably won't surprise you if you listen to the last video that it was Texas. <laughs> the problem was Texas. Uh, Texas, at this point, as you recall from the last video, had gained its independence kind of sneakily by, uh, by capturing uh, General Santana and forcing him to sign treaties. Mexico did not recognize these treaties because they were signed under duress, and they essentially said, hey, you're a province in revolt. We are going to reconquer you as soon as we can feasibly do this. And there were definitely were some raids over the border by the army, definitely some aggression, nothing too successful, but a sign of more that might come. So at this point, Texas realizes, uh, and, I, and I mentioned this in the last video, Texas had been, their annexation to the U.S had been blocked by uh, anti-slavery northerners who are worried about the slave, the spread of slavery with another large territory in the South. And, um, and, uh, the and and of course Mexico itself was very hostile to such an action um, and declared it would be it be a hostile action of the American government to take Texas under its wing. So Texas actually starts to look abroad. They start to kind of probe Britain and France and other foreign nations to establish some sort of protectorate relationship to avoid reconquest. They were under a lot of pressure at this point. Mexico is claiming they're going to reconquer them. They're also suffering and struggling with Comanche raids over the border. Uh, Mexico had the had a pretty decent sort of relationship with the Comanche in which they would basically pay them tribute, uh, pay them off to avoid damage and devastation. And uh, Texas was really struggling with that. So uh, so they start reaching out. And unsurprisingly, Britain was very interest in, interested in establishing a relationship with Texas. Uh, they wanted to prevent further American expansion across North America, possibly into Central America, threatening uh, British interests in the Caribbean and these trade interests with Mexico. And of course, they also saw it as an opportunity to reduce slavery. Uh, you know, the British Empire had just abolished slavery in their empire, and, and um, they saw it as saw also as an opportunity to get rid of slavery in a territory that was that was becoming a slave state, essentially. So Texas becomes this major issue in the 1844 election, mainly because of the British threat. It had become essentially a weak area Texas had for the U.S., an area that could be subject to foreign political intrigue, like as proved by the, the British who were interested in kind of opening a sort of protectorate relationship. So it becomes this big issue. Now, uh, again, there's disagreements on this. By, by, by and large, the Democrats mostly want to expand into uh, into this uh, southern territory, expand slave states. And some of the Whigs do too. And like I said in the last video, not all Whigs were abolitionist northerners. Some of them were southerners who just hadn't particularly liked Andrew Jackson, who was a Democrat. And I'll remind you, Andrew Jackson, in Unit 4, we discussed this, but Andrew Jackson claimed to be all for states' rights, and mostly he was, but sometimes he wasn't, right? For example, with the Tariff of Abominations, that Tariff of 1828, he did not get rid of. So, and he did not back the South during the nullification crisis. So, um, so there were some Southerners that were Whigs as well. So not everybody was anti-expansion. There were some Whigs that were expansionist, um, and certainly the Democrats were land-hungry expansionists as well. Now, the outgoing president, John Tyler, wanted to claim the annexation Texas of Texas as his own achievement. So he worked really hard to make sure that would happen before he left office. Now, normally to sign a treaty to annex, because Texas was an independent state at this point, uh, or at least calling themselves that, even though Mexico didn't agree. Now, to uh, Jackson had recognized them as an independent republic. So essentially, they were a foreign nation on the borders of America. And so the United States could sign a treaty with them. However, a treaty would need a two thirds vote in both houses in order to pass. And that simply would not happen with such a northern dominated House of Representatives. So eager to try to make this one of his achievements, President Tyler arranged for it to be annexed by joint resolution, which required only a simple majority in both houses, which was 51%. And that was plausible. Now, like I said, Mexico claimed when this happened that their province had been stolen. Uh, but their claims were not as strong as they would have been in 1836. 
1836, when Texas first attempted to be annexed, they had just kind of broken away from Mexico. But by 1845, they'd been independent for nine years. There were many, many, many more Texan Americans there than there were Mexicans. Uh, and the um, and also the Comanche raids on Texas had proved how weak Mexico's hold over the region really was. So uh, Mexico was very, very upset about this, but Texas ultimately is going to be annexed by the United States. Now, like I said, Tex Mexico is not satisfied with Texan independence. They're especially upset when Texas gets statehood um, and Tyler helps Texas get annexed. Uh, to try to settle these issues, Polk is going to send this diplomat, John Slidell, to Mexico. Um, and they really just, you know, punt it there because they send them down to Mexico. And not only do they do that, they, they decide to send them down there with an offer to buy even more territory from Mexico. They send them there with $25 million offering to buy California for 25 million um, and um, and settle, of course, the the border of of Mexico and Texas as well. So this is an issue. First of all, the offer to buy California seems like a total insult insult to Mexico. Um, also, there is disagreement about the, where the border actually should be. If you can look at this map here, you will notice that the Nueces River um, up here, just a little bit further north, uh, is where. Uh, Mexico claimed the border was, whenever, whereas the U.S. claimed it was at the Rio Grande. So this is this little, in this red area, this is disputed territory. Uh, now, at this point, a Pope wants to go to war with Mexico and proposes to do so on the basis of the fact that they had rejected John Slidell's offer to buy California and the fact that they had some outstanding debts they had promised to pay to the U.S. but had not. These are pretty weak terms and most people, not most people, but at least enough people in Congress didn't like that idea that they were able to kind of block it and say, no, 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 we would feel better going to war if Mexico were the first people to do something aggressive. So the U.S. stationed soldiers right at the Rio Grande and sure enough, they definitely provoke uh, the Mexican army. Um, so Mexico is going to attack the Americans under General Zachary Taylor, and this leads to a conflict that kills 11 Americans. And at this point, Pope triumphantly goes, oh, see, yep, there you go. Mexico fought first. So in 1846, Congress is going to declare war on Mexico. Now, Ultimately, um, looking at the impact of the Mexican-American War, mostly it was small American armies that were going to um, that were going to fight this war. It wasn't a very drawn out war. Like I said, they were vastly outnumbered, the Mexican armies, and they definitely gained enough ground in California and New Mexico to claim them, as well as Texas. Uh, in fact, they're actually going to conquer and occupy Mexico City and force the Mexican government to negotiate with them to get it back. You know, actually, at this point, a lot of people were saying, no, 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 let's just take Mexico as part of our territory too. Um, and they realized uh, that was uh, south, the Southerners, especially legislators, realized that was uh, biting off a little bit more than they could really chew. So they were able to uh, force Mexico into this really, really uh, disadvantageous treaty for Mexico called the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. And that ceded uh, California and New Mexico to the United States uh, for the price of $15 million. This is known as the Mexican Cession. Uh, even more territory is going to be gained in the Gadsden Purchase, uh, parts of Arizona and New Mexico uh, in 1853. Um, and this is really going to highlight a couple of different things. Um, one big thing is the tension over, over slavery. And we've already mentioned this, but the possibility of the expansion of slavery. So um, right after the Mexican session, uh, the, one of the congressmen named Wilmot is going to attempt to kind of slide in onto an appropriations bill, a rider called the Wilmot Proviso. Now, this Proviso uh, proposes that any land that was gained from the war, the Mexican American War, should be off limits for slavery. Um, this was this would have included Texas, California, New Mexico, uh, parts of Arizona, and um, this inferior of the South. Now, it passed in the Northern dominated House because you'll recall the House of Representatives was dominated by the North, but it was voted down in the Senate. And this really demonstrated the tensions that were going to um, continue to bubble to the surface over the expansion of territory. Um, as for the people who lived in 
Texas. Uh, Mexicans living in that territory were granted U.S. citizenship, but it's worth noting that Native Americans were not. Um, and unsurprisingly, there was a number of assaults on, assaults on civil rights of Native Americans and Mexican Americans, uh, including voter discrimination, educational segregation. Uh, Americans really upset the delicate balance that existed of Mexican and American Indian relationships. Uh, Mexicans living in the Texan territory had um, had a variety of different types of relationships with the Native Americans, including tribute they gave to the Comanche, trade with the Navajo, diplomatic relationships with the Ute, um, and uh, and the um, the Americans are really going to upset this relationship. The American military is going to come in and assert their dominance, not only over uh, Native Americans, but also over the Spanish speaking Mexicans. Uh, and they will force American Indians into even more undesirable lands. Uh, but uh, so this is definitely going to be a pretty big impact to the people living in Texas. But by far, at least for the United States as a whole for this time period, the biggest problem with the victory in the Mexican American War is that it's going to really reveal the tension over the expansion of slavery. So that is going to be a really big part of this. And we're going to talk about more about this in some of our upcoming videos next week.